uh, recorded that you can get on the data on the internet. Um, there are some similar features between our recording and this one, um, like peaks at similar frequencies, uh, but and some dips similarly. But uh, there are also some differences here. Now that may be partly due to be the mic to the microphone being somewhat clogged up with beeswax and propolis. Um, so we're looking into solutions to protect the microphones from such things. Um, there was some evidence of some of the signals that previous reporters, uh, researchers have reported, uh, but we didn't find any evidence of the so-called queen piping that was reported by Kirchner in 1993. Um, we also looked at uh, various other signals from the hive. So uh, temperature and relative humidity, they both show daily periodic variation, but that's not so surprising because relative humidity is, is um, temperature dependent. Warm air can, can uh, cope with more moisture in it than cold air. So relative humidity is well known to be uh, high relative. You know, if you have the same absolute humidity, same absolute amount of water vapor in the, in the air, then high temperature will have lower a relative humidity, low temperature will have higher relative humidity. Um, so if we look at um, instead light level and temperature, this is external light level. Uh, we did get this periodic vari daily variation. These, these recordings were made in a British summer, so it's light for a lot more of the day than it is uh, dark. <coughs> the reverse is true in winter. Um, and this was the light level. So long, relatively long, bright days, relatively short, dark, wet nights. And here was the daily variation of temperature. So definite periodic component here that showed up very clearly in the cross correlation of these two signals. And the, we found that the uh, peak lag, uh, the peak, peak autocorrelation, so a peak cross correlation, I should say, occurred at a time lag corresponding to 2.5 hours. So it was warmest about 2.5 hours after what was peak light level at presumably astronomical midday. We have um, a time shift um, for daylight saving, so-called daylight saving, British summertime between and Greenwich Mean Time. We have Greenwich Mean Time through the winter. We've, we're into Greenwich Mean Time again now. Uh, but from March to October, we have uh, British summertime that's an hour ahead. Uh, so, but this corresponded to a, a lag of 2.5 hours relative to the point in the day when the sun was highest in the sky. Um, we also used our gas sensor to try and look at variation of air quality over time. And uh, the upper graph is the actual uh, air quality signal. Um, so it's effectively measured the, well, it was actually measuring the amount of contamination in the atmosphere, in the air. And we noticed again, regular peaks in this. And this time we did a Fourier analysis of the signal and we found quite clear peaks at um, periods corresponding to one day. So there was a daily variation and also one of one week seven days. Those were, were pretty much spot on at 24 hours and seven times 24 hours. So because this is frequency, uh, lower times, shorter time periods are to the right, higher frequencies are to the right, so shorter, uh, so longer time periods are to the left. So this is the one week peak in the signal, this is the 24 hour one. So <clears throat> we speculated that this was probably due to uh, peak traffic. Well, it probably occurs twice a day, once in the morning, about eight o'clock in the morning, and once in the evening, about 6 p.m. Um, so but the thing is, they're not evenly spaced over the course of the day. So we don't expect to see a, a double twice a day, sig uh, so every 12 hour signal, because those uh, rush hour peaks and not 12 hours apart, but we do expect daily variation due to traffic. And also possibly the weekly variation was an effect due to weekends. Um, we were monitoring hive mass and hive temperature over time. And um, we did find something interesting here because we actually caught a swarm, occur in fact, two swarms occurring. 
from the same hive. Uh, it's not unusual for two swarms to occur, well, first major swarm and then a mini swarm, if you like, occurring just a few days apart. Uh, beekeepers have uh, noted this, so that we did get some uh, advice from beekeepers about our findings. But maybe, <clears throat> the orange signal here is the hive mass, orange signal. Uh, these sudden drops that you see on a couple of occasions are where the beekeeper took the roof of the hive off to inspect the hive. So there was one occurrence here and another one a few days later. Uh, so he just takes the roof off for a few minutes. So this is a very sharp peak because um, these daily peak to peak gaps are probably 24 hours. So these two blue peaks here are probably 24 hours apart. So this time period where the, the orange signal suddenly drops is very short period indeed. As I said, a few minutes. But we did notice a sudden drop here that's not like the daily drop that you get as bees leave the hive to go to, to forage. That's a gradual drop over a few hours. This was a, a sudden drop over a few minutes. And likewise, a smaller one here as well. Now, these corresponded to um, a, a major swarm that we did get some uh, photographic evidence of, and then a minor one a few days later. But the interesting thing is that the, the average temperature, because the, the dark blue signal is the minute by minute temperature, the blue one is the smoothed temperature over a 24 hour period. And we noticed that the, high, the um, swarms occurred as the um, hive temperature rose above a certain critical value. This is indicative of swarm being about to occur. This has been noted by the researchers as well. Here's some close-ups of that, together with some photos. Uh, these occurred on the 13th of June, 2017. Within a couple of hours, we were able to get some photos of where the bees had gone. Initially, they only moved about 50 or 60 meters and settled in a tree while scouts go off to search for a new home. So this is a mass of bees in an apple tree near where they just swarmed from. This was the um, this was a 20, one 24 hour period on the um, uh, 12th to 15, sorry, uh, three 24 hour periods, 12th to 15th of June with the sudden drop as the bees swarmed. Uh, as some bees return after foraging, there was a general gentle mass gain as they bring back uh, pollen and nectar. Um, <laughs> if we compare that with the previous few days, there's a bit of a up and down motion of the, uh, the mass, but you know bees tend to leave over the morning and come back in the afternoon. And, um, but that's really quite different from this sudden drop. If you notice the, the scale here, this is between about 36.5, the upper limit, and about 35.5 kilos, the lower limit. Uh, I would also note that there's a, a, a weight on top of the hive roof to keep the roof on. So um, uh, uh, these, are, these are typical daily variations of about a kilogram, possibly two kilograms here once you're getting up to 37 a few days later. Um, but this was a, a substantial drop uh, corresponding to the whole daily variation within a few minutes when the, 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 uh, when the, the swarm occurred. So if we look now to a bit more recent work, stuff that we've done since 2018 um, and current work as well, um, we did some a pilot study in 2018 looking at um, pollutants such as um, motor vehicle fumes um, and smoke on um, as stresses on the bees. We're still analyzing the result from those, results from those. Uh, we didn't use any uh, pesticides because we didn't actually want to kill our bees off. because uh, we might have trouble getting some more back. Uh, last summer, we uh, did some video based monitoring of the hive from uh, focusing a camera on the hive entrance. We got some promising results from that that uh, we will be presenting elsewhere. And then recently, again, we started processing audio data again and looking at more uh, novel pattern recognition techniques, such as this LSTM network, the long, long short term memory type of neural network for analyzing 